Dazzanads. Hi everyone, welcome to Simpro Chats with Dazzanads. Uh, my name's Adam, um, and my partner in crime is always floating around somewhere. I think it's in the bottom of the screen. I'm Darren from Platinum Consultants. How are you today, Daz? Doing fantastically on this beautiful day. How about you? Very well. We're in COVID lockdown in Melbourne, but we're doing all right. I've left the mask downstairs today, so that way you can actually hear what I'm saying. Um, cool. So we've actually got a special guest, another special guest, which is a super special guest. We've actually got Peter Daly with us, the GM of Simpro Australia. How are you today, Pete? Hi, nice to meet you all. All good. Um, not in lockdown yet in New South Wales, but um, not far from it, I think. Yeah. yeah, you're doing all right up there? Yeah. All good. All good. Beautiful. Um, so we've actually got Pete on um, to discuss a special topic, which is something that I've been really curious and interested about. I'm a self-confessed nerd at heart, as is Daz, <laughs> and as is Pete, actually. Um, so I figure this topic would be close to everyone's heart, seeing as we all love our technology and we all love our Simpro, and why not merge the two together with um, IoT? So what we're going to be doing today is having a bit of an IoT chat to try and, um, I guess, kind of break down exactly what IoT is, um, how it works, how it could work for your business, um and kind of anything and everything in between so pete seeing as you're the iot expert at simpro this uh, is it self-proclaimed or have you been thrust into the iot role <laughs> uh, i'm more, more than i caught the football um so we uh, we've, we've had iot running in the uk for about a year and three quarters mm -hmm. and uh, we thought of the right time to uh, launch it in australia beautiful so we're so we're all guns blazing in australia for iot now are we yeah, absolutely. So we're, at, we're live now. Um, we've uh, launched a range of IoT packages, which I'll go, to, go through why we've done it that way a, bit, a little bit later. Um, but yeah, we've uh, already started making sales um, and pushing the IoT uh, barrow out there within the Simpro community. Awesome. Well, that's all very exciting. So Daz, I'm going to throw you under the bus for a sec. <laughs> I'm sure you know what it is, but what what does IoT actually stand for? Like, what is the little acronym of IoT? Seeing as so IoT is Internet of Things. It basically means connected devices on the internet. Awesome. So it could be a microwave, it could be a camera, it could be anything that you can connect to the internet wirelessly or obviously wired as well. Beautiful. So Pete, seeing as you're the IoT expert, what does IoT actually do? Can you give us a bit of a heads up as to... Um, what it is, just in, I guess, in, in layman's terms. Yeah, look, Darren summed it up beautifully, right? So it's equipment talking to other equipment or sending data. So um, Internet of Things has been around for quite some time. Um, if you're in aviation, they're all, all over it. Uh, mining, all over it as well. Um, large rail infrastructure, especially on the Northwest Shelf. Um, IoT has been used in place a long, long time. Um, but the surge is just coming now for the uh, building or asset market that we're in right now. So um, effectively, you know, what you're actually doing now is you're having an asset and you're monitoring that asset mm -hmm. um, through a sensor. That sensor pushes data through the IoT cloud and with Simpro, it pushes it into Simpro. Now you can, the joy of, of Simpro, and here's a little ad for Simpro. I've got to throw that in. I've got to say, uh, in our IoT. Simpro is... chats after all, so you can go as <laughs> Simpro as you want, mate. <laughs> um, the uh, Simpro is more than just a dashboard. Um, most IoT systems sense what's going on with that equipment and put it into a dashboard. Uh, Simpro goes that extra step, which you can put it into a job management system and dispatch a technician automatically if you want to set that rule. So. Awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it's fun to watch in, in operation. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. So if I've got a, so let's just say that I'm a, um, a HVAC company okay. and I've got or a customer who of mine who's got a whole bunch of different um, air conditioning units everywhere in the building. So I can go and basically install sensors on those um, AC units and then have if one of the AC units is, I don't know, vibrating or just act or misbehaving, yeah. that will then send an alert back into Simpro. 
Yeah, correct. So there's a couple of ways you can look at HVAC and you could look at it uh, from the actual temperature or humidity monitoring within um, the building uh, in the office space. Uh, and what you can do there is set parameters. So if you, want, if you want it to alarm when it goes below 21 degrees or alarm above 24 degrees, uh, then that will push uh, that data through the system. IoT, Supra IoT will analyze that, see that it's out of parameter. And you as the Simpro user um, can tell it to send you an alert. Yeah, you can send you an email or you, if it's important enough, you send a technician directly and put a job into the system so that technician can get there as quickly as possible. Or alternatively, you go root cause like you were talking there uh, with the uh, machinery, whether it be a vibration or whatever is whatever is the root cause of, of, of an issue failing, of a piece, an asset failing, you put a sensor on that. Um, there's two ways you can skin that cat. Um, funny enough, you, you mentioned that we've got a, uh, a demo site um, at the moment and it's the top floor of the Simpro offices. Yep. So we've got a couple of temperature monitors there and they measure temperature, humidity, and we've got another uh, point temperature on the vent straight coming out. One of our um, team was talking to an HVAC player and uh, the HVAC player says, um, is this real? And my guy goes, yeah, of course, it's Simpro head office. He said, uh, you really should look at this because you're not getting enough uh, fresh air <laughs> in there. Your humidity is way too high and you should really have a look at these other components as well because you may have some issue. You might, might want to call in your um, air conditioning contractor. So, yeah, yeah, funny story. But That's awesome. That's awesome. No, that's, that's really cool. So, um, so from that perspective, so it actually integrates into Simpro. So when you integrate into Simpro, you get to set the business rules up with the, the assets, I assume? Absolutely. Yep. So you uh, enter in the parameters of where you want that to monitor. So within these parameters, everything's honky dory. If it goes outside of those parameters, you set the rule chain as mm -hmm. to what you wanted it to do. Yeah. Um, is it just send it, put an alert in Simpro? Is it uh, send an email to yep. your customer, send an email to yourself, whatnot? Or if it's important, like it's a critical piece of equipment, and if it's going out a parameter, generally that means something's skew if then you may have an agreement with your customer to send a technician automatically straight to that site to uh, have a look at that equipment. Yeah, cool. So the way it integrates with Simpro then is there is an asset and on the asset, there are certain IoT devices. Correct. And they are almost like they're, they're, that gives you an extra tab on the asset, does it? Yeah, so you can, the IoT module is a separate module, but yes, it's all based on assets. Um, so that, that uh, sensor is uh, attached to that asset. And in the Simpro module, uh, the IoT module, you can see that relationship in there. Um, yeah, but it absolutely works on assets. Yep. Excellent. So then when it auto creates a job, for example, it would actually add the relevant asset and I guess the parameters that caused it to create the job into absolutely. the job. Yep. Yep. Mm. Yep. Um, Fantastic. The, the joy is you can see that um, you can see that happen over time as well. So within the IO2 module, you can sit there and have a look at today's data, if you wish, and look at that across the last few months as well, and actually look at trends. Um, and I, I hate using the word predict because you know it's not magic, but um, you can actually start to see when a piece of equipment is starting to fail by the way the amount of many times it goes out and in and out of parameter. Mm -hmm. um, and you can actually start to give a heads up and for anybody out there in the field service business um, to give a heads up to a client to do a shutdown is a whole lot nicer experience than walking in there and turning the breaker off and saying your equipment shut down. Well, the nerd in me gets a little bit excited about the, 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 the future predictions that you can do with this stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So how, so how, like you were talking about um, the data coming back in. So how, how live is it? So is the data kind of, is it updating like in 15 minute increments or is it half daily, hourly, or is it, how, how's that work? It depends, it depends on the, the, how the sensor's set up, right? So uh, we talk to the client um, and it may be that sensor's pinging every hour. Yeah, or it could be every two hours or every day. It's as required, right? So okay. um, I was talking about those trains on the Northwest shelf they're pinging nearly every minute. Um, okay. And they're normally, it's about fuel saving for trains. Yep. And so they're seeing where that train is, um, how hard it's pulling, you know, they've got one engine at the other end, this, this, this end, this engine's going downhill, so it doesn't need to drive as hard. Yep. 
Um, so that's the relationship. So it's all about the type of asset and, and how it should be monitored. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. No, that's, that's really cool. Like uh, the, the fact that you've kind of got um, the business rules that you can set up in, in terms of how frequently, I guess it's pinging back into um, into Simpro to, to update the asset data. I mean, I would also assume that that being said, if it was a critical failure or critical defect that it has determined, it wouldn't wait for the two hours to then ping it back. It would just do it instantaneously. Is just that kind of how it would work? Or? No, so you, you normally said it. You, uh, no, it won't do that um, until it pings yeah. um, and finds a problem. Okay. Um, but if you're setting it to ping every hour, um, that's ultimately, I don't know how many times better than having a technician walk in there once a month doing a vision oh, inspection oh. and then walking out. And how many times have I had it in another business where a technician's walked in, does a vision inspection, everything's okay, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the next day the bearing fails. Yeah, it's not well, you'd, hope, you'd hope the technician's actually doing a visual inspection and not just passing it and saying they've done it. Because that, that would never happen, Pete. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, and this is where sensors don't lie. Yeah. <laughs> exactly right. And that's the value of the sensor is that it's documented and logged over a period of time. Yep. So for compliance, it's awesome. Um, uh, yeah. A good example where we're getting a fair bit of demand right now is uh, uh, measuring of water temperature within commercial buildings. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be done um, and um, putting a sensor on there is ultimately much more sense than having a poor uh, maintenance guy walk around doing temperature check, temperature check, temperature check. Mm -hmm. In fact, we've uh, worked with a, a, a hospital in the UK where that was basically the whole fellow's job was to walk around doing temperature checks um, and what we did was put sensors on it instead. Yeah, um, that that hospital decided to redeploy that labor. But if you're looking at return on investment and things like that, um, the hospital would have the option of removing that head from the business and saving that 50, 60,000 pounds uh, in headcount. Well, I mean, especially, uh, sorry, sorry to cut you off, Des. I mean, just one thing I kind of wanted to touch on as well with that. I mean, I guess with the current climate that we're living with in, in the, the COVID world at the moment, it would be even be more important because I know a lot of my customers, unfortunately, the some of the maintenance has been put off because just buildings, you're not really entering at the moment because, you know, office buildings have been shut down and people are trying to save money on, on whatever they can at the moment and being able to not have to send a body into an office and go through that whole um, induction and, and everything else, but still being able to monitor the assets to make sure the air quality is um, where it needs to be. I think at, at this point of time in, in the world and where we're at, I think it's even more critical that something like this, really gets deployed out there in the market. Yeah, you've hit the nail on the head, actually, because when I was young, and at one point I was young. Oh, um, come on now, you, you're still <laughs> in, in my 70s. Um, <laughs> um, blue shirts many, many years ago were not, no one wanted to see a blue shirt mm. in, the, in the building. You had to run around and skulk around in motor rooms and, and all that sort of stuff. Then it came into the 90s where everybody was all about relationship with your, uh, with your subcontractor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that everyone wanted to, and we we had all these technicians who 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 weren't used to they were you know weren't used to going out there and talking to their customer and all that sort of stuff. But and in the nineties, everybody wanted the technician to have that relationship, so they talk to the client, sign off, all that sort of stuff. You're right. Now it's flipping and it's on its head again. We don't want poor people in our buildings, or we want to limit the amount of people in our buildings. We're going back to that. In fact, there's a in fact, there's a uh, major site um, in Sydney, Barangaroo, that as soon as you walk in that building with a high-vis shirt, uh, I can guarantee you within about 30 seconds, you've got security uh, coming up and say, look, we don't allow high-vis uh, within, the, within the building. Yeah. It's so that switch and COVID is just making that happen faster, right? Yeah, it's exacerbating it at the moment. And if you add to that the security concerns just in general of having someone walking through your building, yeah. the um, disruption to work that that person would create, just having someone in the building, everyone looks up, what, what's he doing? Who's that guy? You know, and so there's a bit of disruption. You yeah. can prevent all of that and then, you know, be safe at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. And so if, you're, if your model is a, a visual or a uh, in-person inspection, you might be without income at the moment. But if your model was a subscription based using IoT, it's as good as it ever was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that, that comes down to um, uh, the trades saying, why would they take on IoT, right? 
Um, you know, it means less maintenance visits. Well, let me tell you, if we don't as trades go and help our customers by installing equipment on their sites mm -hmm. and getting that monitoring revenue, that site will put on, on their own monitoring and reduce your service value. Yeah. Um, no matter how it plays, your, your human service revenue is going to reduce, but it's a matter of your choice of whether you get that reoccurring revenue through monitoring to um, hedge that a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it is a premium service for, for people at the moment. And on top of that, um, you'll pick up some extra revenue because you can detect that things are going awry, awry a long time before someone who visually inspects it once a month would. Correct. So you can actually get them to put budget aside for replacement, things like that. Yeah. And as I said, if you can actually, you know, uh, even, even suggest to a customer, hey, look, we think there's something going wrong because you're going out of parameter, you're doing this, it's doing that, and have a, a, a plan shutdown, the customer satisfaction, let me tell you how many shutdowns I've managed, which they're not planned, and it's <laughs> never happy um, because that customer's customers are going berserk uh, because it's either too hot or it's too cold or they can't get up in their elevators, all that sort of stuff. Um, a planned outage is a much more pleasurable experience for everybody. God forbid they'd have to put a jumper on if it was getting a bit chilly. I mean, yes, oh, right. Some buildings are very special, Adam. Some buildings are very <laughs> special when they're tenants. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I bet. Well, we've been talking about the, the IoT and I'm kind of jumping ahead in the run sheet a little bit, but um, as soon as we are talking about, I guess, the technology and componentry of it. So in terms of the, the individual components that are required to make IoT work, so we've been talking about sensors. So sensors obviously get installed on the, the equipment itself. So um, that being said, I'm assuming the, the sensors can just be retrofit to older equipment. It doesn't need to be a new HVAC, a new AC unit, for example, that you'd be installing. No, correct. So that's, that's one of the joys of this system is that you can retrofit. Um, yeah. To give you an example, a, uh, one of our little Pico sensors is about a 50 cent piece sort of size, mm -hmm. uh, about a centimetre thick. Um, that will measure temperature and humidity. Mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't need to be wired into 240 or anything like that. It runs on its own lithium battery and that lithium battery at, at, at normal pace will last for uh, up to two years. Yeah. Uh, it's unreal. Um, that also that sensor, that little Pico node um, will also have line of sight, a two kilometer range to the gateway. Um, so we've had that designed uh, for us with a partner in uh, Europe mm -hmm. and we, we also supply the hardware and also the software. So it's a full solution we're, pro we're providing. Yeah, cool. So, so the sensors then ping into a, a central hub, which is essentially your internet um, that then goes back into Simpro. So it's Correct. all connected through Wi-Fi, I guess. Yep. The, it goes from the sensor to the gateway on site. Yeah. Uh, and then through uh, through the cloud to Simpro IoT and Simpro. Nice, because I mean, I've kind of like, again, the nerd in me kind of comes out just like it does in Daz. Mm. Um, and, you know, like when I started looking into this technology, the, the best kind of, I guess, analogy that I've been using with people when I talk about OT is kind of like where in terms of retrofitting, where you might have a TV that's, you know, 10 years old, that's obviously not a smart TV, but you could plug in a um, like a Chromecast into it and then essentially turn that into a smart TV. So to kind of be a similar sort of thing, just from a, from a hardware perspective where you're retrofitting something to make it smart and to send the information back. Yeah. Cause let's be honest. I mean, uh, equipment out there, I mean, there's brand new equipment out there, which is IOT able right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but the vast, vast portfolio of equipment is all older equipment that is not IOT able. So therefore retro being able to retrofit is a real advantage for people. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, I've got, uh, as you know, people that kind of know me, through the, cold, the whole COVID thing, I've been working out of my mate's brewery. Um, and this is actually going somewhere. It's not a plug. Um, <laughs> and so, like they've obviously got a lot of beer and everything else in their cool rooms. And, you know, like imagine if their cool room dropped out and then everything just, you know, went off, like all the hops and barley and everything else, like being able to set the, like a cool room up with a sensor in it to make sure that it's staying in an appropriate um, range that kind of opens up the door to to restaurants to anywhere that really has anything like that where it's super critical where if something does go wrong you could be looking at a loss of thousands and thousands of dollars and you wouldn't know it until you come in in the morning and everything was off um, being able to 
fit, fix that on the spot, you could save the customer tens of thousands of dollars just in one, in one hit. So the advantage to getting IoT in terms of return on investment is huge for someone like that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, people say, oh, what's the ROI on this particular kit? Well, it depends on its application. You know, um, you know uh, we've had a, a, a request for um, temperature monitoring of the pool. Mm -hmm. Now, your return on investment might be quite long, but um, if your customers are sitting there going, your pool's freezing, I'm not coming back. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, how do you how do you get that return on investment when you actually don't know why the customers not come back? Yeah, and you can chuck on your togs to install it as well. It'd be great. You go for a little bit. <laughs> Absolutely, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fantastic. So we've we've talked about the data that we can see on dashboards and yeah. the fact that it can auto create jobs. Um, what about our customers? How can they see the data that we have? Is there something for them? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, for the customer's customer, you mean? For the, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah the so customer. the customer's customer, we, um, the dashboard is also available for the customer's customer. Um, now it makes life very, very transparent, let me tell you. Uh, <laughs> um, depending on your service contract, the customer sees exactly what you see um, and they can see when that thing's alarming and whatnot. But let me tell you, we have an example out of, of Brisbane where we're monitoring a cool room, funny enough. Mm -hmm. And um, we gave the dashboard to the customer. Um, we, that customer checks that thing every few hours now. Um, mm -hmm. It's become addicted to looking at that data. Um, it's fabulous, which makes it really sticky, right? Yeah, absolutely. Totally. And of course, that's probably another premium service that you can offer is, is a you know, customer portal. Yeah. Absolutely. It's in for the customer's customer. <laughs> yeah, the customer's customer, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so then when someone goes to site and they're actually working on, on this device, is there, are they able to access the IoT data at all from site? No, it's from, um, from enterprise, the, the module in enterprise. Um, but when, the, when the, they're sent out there due to a fault, they know what assets faulting uh, and also to what, what's caused that fault as well. Not what's caused that fault, but what the, the fault in it's 26 degrees um, out of parameter, da, 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 da. Um, we, yes. probably will, we probably will move to that at one point and we'll progress it like we do a lot of the other Simpro add-ons. Um, but yeah, it's, it's currently it's enterprise that sees it, the office sees it. Great. Well, they, I mean, I do know quite a few techs that have access to the, the enterprise from site should they need it. Okay. Um, but also at least they get the parameters exactly what failed and what the temperature was or, you know, what the vibration was or whatever. So they will get that data. They just can't see the history yet. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, which is great. It's fantastic. So you mentioned also the um, two years or so on a, on a normal basis for this uh, lithium battery to last for that particular sensor, we do yeah, have other, we have a, other sensors as well, which um, um, uh, such as the temperature point um, sensor that also on a lithium battery. So it is basically plug it and play. Um, other sensors that are coming uh, will be having to wire it into uh, two forty, um, but most of our customers, uh, are, you know, whether they be in HVAC, electrical, whatnot, um, are qualified to install that equipment. With the other sensors that are battery, it's basically you or I could just go and plug it in today. Uh, it's just stick it on the wall stuff. So I imagine they've been created and, and, and the quality within there is quite good as, and, and quite reliable. Have you, do you know the, the reliability statistics? Do, they, do any of them fail We've been running this in the UK for up to uh, a year and three quarters. And um, the main reason they fail uh, is because, like many things, vandalism. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and that can occur. Um, but if you put them up high enough, these things are that small. No one sees them, right? Um, yeah. And quite often these sensors are out, uh, out the back anyway, in a plant room and whatnot. So, you know, Joe Public, who like to souvenir things, um, are not involved, which is nice. And I imagine that sometimes they can even be installed, say, inside the case or, you know, under the lid or whatever it is. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm guessing when it goes offline, 
there's an alert for that too. There is. So if we have, uh, for example, um, well, if someone steps on the little Pico node and crushes it and kills it, um, it doesn't ping. And when it doesn't ping, then it, uh, an alarm goes up saying, you've got a problem with this particular sensor sitting on this particular asset. Or and other things that can go wrong, uh, a major, um, uh, an outage with a telco, uh, where there's no uh, SIM data, it alarms as well, saying, hey, the gateway's got a problem with the, the okay. SIM, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you, you are advised of that instead of not just, you know, it's just into a black hole, which is nice. Fantastic. So the, so we've kind of spoken about a couple of different industries, but like what, what from your experience, Pete, what are the sort of industries that generally tend to, grab, uh, to gravitate towards the IoT? Yeah, look at... The first part of demand that we've had is, and that's where we've developed most of our kits for this first wave, mm -hmm. uh, has been environmental. So temperature, humidity, um, water temperature, so coolers and all that sort of stuff, uh, measuring water. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where we brought out our, our first range of, of kits. The, what you'll see on the website will evolve over time. We've already started planning phase two of those particular kits. Mm -hmm. um, one of these, uh, where we thought, well, we think we, there was a company in the UK that said, oh, we really want to do this environmental monitoring. So one of these sensors um, can do seven different things. It does temperature, humidity, volatile compounds, CO2, and basically it's for health of the building. So if you're a tier one player um, in the middle of the CBD, they're fighting tooth and nail against the next building is who, whose building's healthier, whose building's better. Uh, nursing homes, you know, uh, A-grade nursing homes, proving that their nursing home is healthier than others. And let's face it, this is the time for that to happen. Yeah. Um, that, that particular sensor set is also out in the kit as well. So the first, the first wave is, for us has been temperature and humidity, uh, temperature of water, temperature of humidity, that sort of thing. The next phase will be electrical. So we can look at the current drawer on motors and things like that. And we could probably even see where that motor is about to pop, um, uh, which is a technical term, having a motor pop or let the smoke out of it as some people would. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Fantastic. Um, but yes, we, yeah, there's, um, we've, we're about to make a quite a major announcement out of the UK of a, a major multinational um, uh, building management company that we've done a deal with, mm -hmm. uh, which is really, really exciting. You don't want to give us an exclusive on oh. Simco Chats, do you? Oh, I'd be shocked. <laughs> I'd be shocked. I wouldn't do that to you. Just teasing. Just teasing. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. It's all, it's all good. I don't know Simpro quite well. I know you, I know that's not an empty threat. Um, so in terms of um, <laughs> the future, the future of IoT, so where do you see the future kind of going with it? So with, with what you've said, kind of going into motors and so forth, do you kind of see it um, from your experience evolving to um, anywhere else? Oh, absolutely. Look, <sighs> IoT right now in our world, uh, mm -hmm. and within that asset maintenance world, um, it's the next dot com, without a doubt. Um, you you can imagine what applications a simple a simple temperature uh, something that measures temperature can be used for so many different damn things, yeah, um, or, or vibration, yeah. So imagine. Imagine you're a council out there and um, I'll think of some of the larger councils around, in, especially in Queensland, where they're sending a technician 200 kilometres to do a visual inspection on a pump. Yeah. Wow. You know, there's some applications out there that, um, you know, you're saving stacks of money um, by just having sensors doing their thing out there day in, day out. Um, the applications are, are endless, you know. So the, I suppose the trick for me, or well, the trick for people is um, we've done a fair bit of work into this where we'll talk to a customer and the customer says, I want to do everything. Mm -hmm. And where does that project go? It goes absolutely nowhere because yeah. we're trying to do too much with too many sensors and get the, the business case together. Where, where it goes very, very well for customers is they have a unique problem or a particular problem, mm -hmm. but it's spread across 40 of their sites. And I'll just go into temperature monitoring for legionnaires and things like that. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's where it starts to spread from there. And they go, hey, you know what? Uh, we can start measuring temperature within the rooms and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. And that's how these projects get spread out. Yeah. So even, even, in, even in like, if, if I kind of put my thinking hat on, so even for someone like a facilities manager, for example, I mean, they've got a, they've got a, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 buildings that they all manage and all the common areas generally tend to be um, a part of the body corporate or the owners corporation. So even being able to get, you know, the sensors installed in a lot of the common areas to make sure that um, everything's all running okay, that kind of then opens up the door for facility managers to then kind of use Simpro to monitor the buildings to then flick out work orders to contractors to actually go and engage those buildings in the common areas to make sure everything's running okay. So I imagine that the application is just endless. Just oh, totally. So uh, another one of the kits that are out right now is water ingress. So it's, yeah. it measures water, right? So imagine the places you can put that in plant rooms, which are prone to water damage. Car mm. parks are huge for water damage. Um, you can actually get to that problem and have a, a pit slurper or, or a pumping um, mobile pump in there before it damages three floors of your car park. Yeah. Mm. Um, all those sorts of applications um, are there. Um, for example, we've we've had a bite from a from a large um, railway provider that have uh, sites dotted all around the country, which are remote sites that nobody goes there for weeks on end. But there's some pretty complex machinery in there, and but they want to know that the temperature is right, the humidity is right, so their equipment doesn't break down after time. Um, these little sensors do their job day in day out. Um, until there's a problem and it alerts that customer, customer sends a technician out, fixes the problem. So can you see with your magical future hat, um, is, it, is it going to come to a point at, at, at some stage where if a company doesn't have this technology available to them, that they might lose contracts, they might lose, lose out on especially the bigger ones and then eventually the smaller ones? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a, um, with the previous company I was with that did um, elevator maintenance. I was talking to a large railway station and uh, this large railway station said, oh, we're going to totally redevelop this station. Um, and every player who puts equipment in there must be IOTable. Mm -hmm. um, and the ability for them to siphon off data so they can put the IoT data into their own system with algorithms and whatever. Mm -hmm. But also to that, that um, OEM, if you like, uh, also has to have their own IoT able equipment to, um, to even get a Guernsey on this site. So that's a really large example. Mm. But, you know, as a small player, you can make a hell of a difference against these big boys and the big boys quite a, sometimes are stuck to their own equipment um, it's proprietary, so no one else can touch it. It makes, makes building owners upset, yeah? <laughs> um, as a small player, you can offer this type of system and do some real damage by the to these larger providers um, by the time they turn around and realise, hey, goodness me, we really should open up our systems and put APIs and all that, make it APIs available, all that sort of stuff. You can do some really serious damage uh, out there and get some really good business. So you mentioned the word proprietary. Is Simpro's technology proprietary or if the customer decided to move away from Simpro, can they then redirect the, um, the, the calls to another technology? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, it's all open source. It's all good. Um, it's like the rest of Simpro. We open up Simpro through API. We have, um, you know, with Simpro Enterprise and our other add-on products, we have people who are connecting to us that compete with our add-on products. That's cool. It's called competition. Yeah. Um, and that is the way of the future. Yep. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So with the cost of getting started with IoT, yep. is, that, is it cost prohibitive to do this on, on, for the average electrician, plumber, HVAC? No, not at all. Um, we, uh, the, the way we, we price it is we sell the hardware to our customer. And then we, uh, and then there's the monthly uh, report, monthly monitoring fees. Mm -hmm. But we're talking um, uh, just a rough number here for one of the kits that I've got out right now. Uh, for all the hardware, uh, it's fifteen hundred dollars, uh, and then the monitoring is not a lot of money. Yeah, we're talking about eighty dollars a month, uh, of which you know you can either you can include that in your contract and increase the price of your service contract, or you can put 
the clip the ticket on the way through for the customer's customer and put a margin on that monitoring fee mm. um, and make a revenue stream out of that. So yeah, it's certainly not it's certainly not cost prohibitive. For example, maybe you might have bought one of our kits um, for a site and the customer said, hey, look, this is really cool. There's other parts of this site with a campus style. Mm -hmm. Then you don't need to go repurchase another gateway. Uh, that gateway will handle up to 1,500 sensors hanging off it. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and you can just buy individual sensors after that to add to this particular site. You just go stick them onto everything else. Why not? Just well, we have the Simpro too. We've we've um, my IT guy. He uh, he's getting a bit excited now. So we, uh, as of this morning, uh, young Dave Jenkins has um, started installing sensors inside the fridge, um, <laughs> inside <laughs> inside the um, the where the milk's kept for the coffee machine. Yeah. Yeah, he's getting a bit overexcited. I need to probably calm him down on that. But um, will, it, will it alert him on a Friday afternoon if people haven't cleaned out the fridge with all their dirty old lunches? Oh, look, yeah, well, I hope <laughs> you've sent an alert out. Please uh, remove all your lunch piles and uh, yeah, yeah, of offices, right? Yeah, nice. So you can, so, so it's, so I guess from my perspective, uh, and again, I'm not like, uh, I'm just excited. It's, uh, it's, it's really scalable. So if you started off with a small kit and then kind of installed it as a part of like the rollout, you can then just, I guess, just keep scaling from there. Once a customer kind of sees what it does and how it works and how it would benefit them, you can just keep scaling and just go your hardest. And that is the joy. And so that's why I was saying before, start with a particular mm -hmm. issue, solve that issue and then spread it out uh, over time. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, like if we talk, like we've said return on investment a few times, but I mean, if it's only 1500 bucks, you're talking about if you can reduce the amount of time that you've got a technician doing walkthroughs in a building by, you know, five, six, 10 hours a, a quarter, you're going to make that back heaps more in terms of what you'd be mm -hmm. paying your technicians to go just do visual inspections. You could just yeah. almost reduce it completely. Yeah, um, and if it's critical infrastructure, um, the faster you respond to that, pays off in spades for that customer. Yeah, yeah. and I know with Daz, like we we had a um, a a big Simpro chat about um, the maintenance plan and preventative maintenance, and we we spoke a little bit about um, contracts that customers have, have got in store. So we you know with us, we've got close to you know maybe twenty years experience in, in dealing with customers with preventative maintenance works. And we know that contracts can be quite skinny in terms of the profit margins that you're putting out to tender. So if you can try and make back some of that money just in terms of the contract alone is worth a fair bit. And then you can, I guess, get on top of the, the assets failing and actually get quotes out really quickly. Cause you don't even need a 10 site to get a quote out. If you've got the data there and you know exactly what's gone wrong, you can basically just um, analyze the fault, get a quote sent out and send out the report and the, and the quote to fix the asset on the spot without even needing to go out to site. The, the possibilities are endless with it. Yeah. So I, my background's been in field service. So from a customer perspective, they, they talk to me ad nauseum about this particular aspect and they'd say, all you guys are competing on price. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are competing on price because we perceive that you guys are no better than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So therefore price is your only differentiator. They'd say, come up with something different that ensures us a better quality of service and we will pay you no more money. No ifs or no buts. Yeah. Um, and that is so true about this. You'll see in a lot of tenders out there, the innovation section, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, you know, and sometimes I remember I'd sit there and scratch my head, right? And go, innovation, God, what, what sort of innovation can I throw in it? Is it a multicolored handrail? Is it a whatever? Um, this is the sort of innovation they're looking for. Maybe I could um, color code some of my spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yes. Um, and, and along with that innovation, you're also reducing your carbon footprint by not having to have all these cars on the road to get people out to site. And it's, there's just lots of, lots of benefits that I can see. I, I honestly can't see any negatives to IoT. I just see benefits, uh, benefits everywhere. Absolutely. And then this is where someone who's a, you know, a little bit smaller trying to break in can absolutely break into the, to, with the big guys and have some differentiation. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and not at their time or their cost. Mm. Yeah. And exactly I, as you said, there's quite a few people that have 
uh, broken in. And the way they've done that is they've promised better reporting. And what that better reporting usually meant for them is a whole lot of extra time getting these reports ready and sending them every month. Yep. But now it can be done automatically yep. for a few five or 10 bucks a month, you know, for, for a couple of senses, they're, they're on their way. Yeah. I mean, you know, going back a few years um, when field tools weren't the norm with technicians, you know, I'd, I'd sit there and, and uh, <laughs> I'd produce a report for a, a major retailer and the major retailer would say, you haven't completed your maintenance again, you know, for the month. And I go, hey, 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 no, no, uh, we have, but we just haven't got the work tickets in from the field yet. You know, and then so when innovation was when we got field tools, yeah, we, where it was automatically put into the system. How cool is that for innovation? This is just another jump, yeah, um, and, and providing a better service. Because there's some players out there and some customers who value compliance over quality of maintenance, yeah. Um, you tick all those right boxes, yeah. You don't have to do the best maintenance in the world, but you, you're absolute compliant. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, the, the, I guess one of the last things that I had kind of on my list that I wanted to, I guess, bring up from, from an IOT perspective, um, because I had a, I had a customer who has just recently, uh, implemented Simpro quite successfully for, for HVAC and they're doing a lot of preventative maintenance works. Now, what they're really interested in from their customer's perspective, their customers are asking them to. To, to give them some really sexy reports. And we want to know exactly what we're spending on these assets. And we want to know exactly where the assets are going to. It's great that you're going to do preventative maintenance, but we kind of want to know what's the, um, the life cycle of this asset. Is that something where you see Simpro kind of going in the future for, uh, especially this is kind of like the next evolution of asset life cycle, because you are doing purely, um, this is pure preventative maintenance it's, it's, and reactive maintenance at the same time. It's a bit of both. So do you see kind of Simpro going down that path of like the asset lifecycle reporting with this as well? Yeah, so you might have noticed over the last year, year and a half, we've um, started to introduce uh, parent-child assets, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's us getting ready for all that. Yeah. Um, whereas we only had one asset before and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. With parent-child, you can add layers of asset, all that sort of stuff. Um, this is where we're starting to allocate costs to an asset. You can say, absolutely watch this space. Um, life cycle reporting, accurate life cycle reporting um, is where we're heading next. Yeah. That's awesome. You're going to make, I think just that statement alone is going to make a lot of people very, very happy, Peter. Yeah. Very happy indeed. And a lot of competitors very, very nervous. Yeah, it is. It's almost a holy grail. Um, I remember as a, a, a young service manager and, and young account manager providing, putting these uh, life cycle reports to a customer and actually sitting there going, mm, yeah, um, I don't even know when these were installed. And, um, you know, <laughs> I don't even know what the status is. I don't even know how much money we've spent on them. Um, and it was just making it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, is there anything else that you kind of wanted to add that? Are you pretty happy with, with everything we've discussed? Yeah, I think we've covered almost everything you can cover. But uh, before we do wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to cover, Peter, on IoT? Anything we didn't ask you about? Look, I think we've covered a whole range of um, what is IoT uh, application and whatnot. Um, I'm just really excited to have it in Australia now. Uh, and roll this this out and to keep watching the new kits we bring out. Um, and look, if anybody's interested in uh, hearing more about IoT, just whip in through the website and um, I'll be able to help them out. Awesome. Awesome. Fantastic. That's great. All right. So I, look, I just also wanted to um, take the opportunity to, to thank Simpro for allowing me to come on. Um, it's been great to actually have one of the big wigs actually on Simpro Chats is a big breakthrough to actually get um, Pete on here. I'm, I'm really- That's someone famous. I know, I know. Got, <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah. We've got a bit of, yeah, we've got a bit of a celebrity status Simpro now. Simpro fame. Uh, things we've got the GM on. Um, so no, but I, yeah, I just want to take the opportunity to thank Simpro for allowing um, Peter to come on. It's, it's been great to be able to have this chat. Um, I know that Simpro did do their digital summit just recently. Um, and I did watch the, um, the chat that you had in the digital summit. So I wanted to kind of do something a little bit different to, to that, um, where it was kind of a bit more of a, a chat. 
Um, and if those people out there haven't had a chance to have a look at the digital summit, I very highly recommend that you do because there's a lot of really, really good information that Simpro put out there um, for, for all customers. And there was a lot of really good chats in there too. So if you weren't aware that it actually happened, um, definitely go back and have a look through the back catalog because there was a lot of really good stuff. Uh, I know uh, Carla and her team did a fantastic job putting all that <laughs> together. Um, and Peter will obviously being a part of it too. So yeah, definitely go back and have a look through those because they did a great job. Um, cool. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for joining again, Pete. Um, so again, I'm Adam from AMAC Consulting. I haven't really got my AMAC top on today. I'm a bit cash in my hoodie. I probably should have worn a suit seeing as Pete was coming on. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and Daz, where can, where can everyone find you, brother? So I'm Darren from Platinum Consultants and just go to platinumconsultants.com.au or you can email me darren at platinumconsultants.com.au and a special thank you for coming on board with us in the Simpro chats, Peter. It's been great and the nerd in me is extremely excited about the official release and I'm looking forward to seeing this in the field. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. much. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks again. So um, until next time with our Simpro chats, um, we'll see you then. All right. Awesome. See you then. Bye. Bye.